Bet House member video and is a part of the ongoing Force for Good class series. To learn more about this ongoing series, please visit TibetHouse.us. Nothing is secret. Tantra is already taught by Buddha in the Four Noble Truths. I, I, I very re rebelliously say, Tantra is taught in the Four Noble Truths. Because in the Third Noble Truth, he says, Nirvana is the actual reality. Try to imagine it. Try to realize it. So that right there is teaching Tantra. Because everybody thinks they're in some really difficult world and it's really horrible. And the five guys he was talking to initially are like, torturing themselves. They're so upset with the way the world is. So he's telling them, third noble truth, the, re the only real thing is nirvana. Try to imagine it. Try to realize it. He says, that's it. He knows they have to try. It's not a truth for them because they're not yet noble beings. You know, they're all stuck in their own self-identity. So it's nothing secret. But socially, when I said secret, that's a socially. Because socially, Societies are, you know, people will misunderstand. And um, some societies are a certain way. And rulers could misunderstand. If you say this is all nirvana, they can say, well, I can kill everybody. I don't like it. It's still nirvana. Who cares? You know, they, they can they go and be in another body and it'll be nirvana. In other words, anything, any human thing can be destroyed, messed up by ignorance, by ignorant humans, right? So certain very powerful things, like the unconscious, even that there is such a thing as the unconscious. That might be really bad for someone who wants to think I'm in control, I'm being a good person, and I'm nice, and God makes me nice, and that's great. And to think that that person is like, has the eros and thanatos in their unconscious, and they're basically the same as a serial killer. They could be with a different circumstance, or they could be some crazed libertine. You know? That wouldn't be good for them. It'd be nice for them to be a nice pater familias and not be too nasty in their family. So it, it has to build up. People have to get a certain way, you know. You, 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 Buddha is a realist. Dalai Lama is a realist. Deals with the world as it is. And that's the encouraging thing. This Dalai Lama, if he really has the equal of the Buddha's compassion and insight, which I think he does, he says we're ready for world peace, actually. He doesn't say we still have to have World War IV and five and three and whatever. He doesn't say that. You know, the 13th Dalai Lama, he didn't say that. He, uh, during his big retreat, they had World War I, actually. And every empire in Eurasia collapsed during his three-year Yamantaka retreat. 1914, 1917 was his three-year retreat. <laughs> putting out a little energy, I guess. Or, or maybe that was his way of dealing with the insane energy that was around in World War I. And what, what is the essence of the World War I? The, the supposedly most civilized, the flower of England, the flower of Germany, the flower of France, most civil, Austria, you know, the most civilized people. They sat in these trenches and they just blasted each other back and forth and slaughtered 35 million of them, which was a much bigger number in relation to the population at that time. That would be like a billion people today, in, in proportional to the population in 1914. 30 million or four, 30, 40 million. And they're back to get to five yards or 10 yards, they, would, they lose like 10,000. Ridiculous. That they obeyed the orders of the stupid guy sitting in the back, Lord Toughbottom, sitting there having his like, tea, sending them off. Why would they obey that? Crazy. You know, California hippies wouldn't obey that. They said, you shoot me just straight on, you know. I'm not going to go get shot by that uh, over there. Just you, you know. And that's there you shoot me straight. I'm not going to do it like that. Magical net is just like a hologram, basically. It's like Samantha Bhadra's thing in the Flower Ornament Sutra. But in the, particularly in the context of the Tantra, the Maya Jala Tantra, it, has, it connects to these Dakinis, you know, these uh, female Buddhas who are everywhere, actually, uh, like Samantha Bhadra, you know. And so it's, um, it's a vision that reality is embraced within the enlightened minds of a network of enlightened female Buddhas. It's really what magical net means. Like, for example, Maya Devi, the magical goddess, 
is the mother of Shakyamuni, of Siddhartha, who becomes Shakyamuni Buddha, right? And so that's in a sort of level where people are seeing sort of the individual and history coming and being ordinary and then being a Buddha. But Magical Net sees that Maya Devi is everywhere doing that. She's, she is the, she's the wisdom energy of the universe that is giving birth to all enlightened beings, right? And the enlightenment in all beings. So that's sort of Maya job. Swabhavikakaya is in a way a similar thing. Swabhavikakaya means a body of nature. So it's just a way analytically of referring to a body of reality, dharmakaya. You know, that's when they split dharmakaya in two. They say body of nature and then they call it intuition uh, reality body. So natural reality body and intuition reality body. Meaning sort of they make a subject object out of what is beyond subject and object just for, just for convenience, you know, just for fun. Just as a relativistic game, neither of them, you know, really are, you know, are the absolute, you know. No verbal description of anything is the absolute, you know, it's just relative. So the nature body just means that reality, and that's the same, that's nirvana, that's the magical net, that's whatever it is. The sahajakaya is the more, fun, is the kalachakra one, sahaja, which people translate innate, which is not very smart, which actually means orgasmic body. That means where everything is made of the, the orgasmic bliss. Like even the wall is made of orgasmic bliss, the building, everything. Meaning that the clear light of bliss is a, is a melting bliss that everything is made of. Even though it seems to definitely not be melting, and please don't melt and have the third floor fall down on my head. But in this relative moment, it's, I'm not capable of withstanding that. But. Um, those are just ways of conveying the inconceivability of reality, which is nirvana. Okay? So Bhavi Kakaya is right here. It's all yours. <laughs> this video was brought to you in part with the generous support of the Tibet House U.S. membership community. To learn more about the benefits of Tibet House membership, please visit Tibet House US, including invites to special trips to study Buddhism up close and personal with Robert Thurman during his annual geographic expedition trips. Trips in 2018 include Mongolia and Bhutan. To learn more, visit BobThurman.com.